So um, Peter Racy here, uh, as previously indicated in this playlist, and I'm here with David, um, and we are at the Hexham Abbey, and what would you call this section? This, this is one of the very original sections, isn't it? No, we're not quite original, but it's sort of one, of, one of the oldest sections which still alive, is still um, We are old. talking several hundred years yeah, old. We're talking, uh, yeah, just about a um, thousand years old here. Yeah, so um, when we say, okay, not original, it's still fairly... Yeah, in the best part of a thousand years yeah. old. But there's been monastic, there's been a monastic uh, foundation here for about 1,300 years mm. uh, of different sorts of monks, not always like the robed monks that we t t kind of get, tend to get used to, but um, Wilfrid's monks, the founder of the abbey, were a much more sort of um, uh, rough and ready group of people who seriously just wanted to be out of the rest of the world and on their own to concentrate their thinking yeah, on God. Couldn't really ask for a more of a historic and uh, memorable um, location to, uh, to talk uh, in relation to uh, to Ken and Gala. Now, um, we were just talking a little while ago, and you've actually got an original letter from Ken and Gala to your father. I have, yes. Um, if you just want to just give us just a little feel, yes. um, I just f think that that would uh, add greatly to the uh, the, the discourse. Yeah, I, I think. W may I read some of it? Yes. Um, so this is a written letter written um, from PO Box forty seven A. GPO Brisbane in October 1936, which of course was a year of huge change because of the abdication of the king, and um, that's mentioned within it here. Um, and we have to remember that this was written in 1936, October, when Canon David Garland was 72, uh, and still at St Barnabas in Red Hill. Mm. Um, so I say, this is what he writes. Uh, your letter of the 16th September arrived on the 20th instant. That says something about speed of travel from yes. one place to another. Uh, I'm sorry to have been busy, too busy since then to reply. And of course, you understand that I'm not working full time any longer. Okay, well, we'll hear about what full time means in a moment. Thank you for your donation for our church news, which quite thrills me. You'll, when you see it acknowledged, you will notice that, this, um, that the uh, sea air has increased it from your 10 shillings to 12 shillings and sixpence. <laughs> uh, so he's made a donation which has already increased in value. Uh, so my father um, was a young priest at the parish of St Matthew's Church in Westminster, uh, fairly close to the Houses of Parliament, um, but in a fairly tough area of, of, uh, of, of uh, London. So I'm glad to hear of your year at St Matthew's and I'm confident that under the present regime it will come back to its old reputation. This is a priest in Australia who is aware enough mm. of what the parish in London is doing and how it's probably fallen a little bit flat and is beginning to raise itself up again. That's quite remarkable. Um, your mother writes me wonderful letters, though too few, but I'm not complaining as it's very good of her to write at all of course, I realise that her health is very weak. October 1936, his sister, um, my grandmother, um, who was very weak in health as early as 1936, lived with us in our family, um, where we lived together as a family, and died in 1959. So she did remarkably well very. to keep going for a further 20 years. So she was well into her 90s then? Uh, she was uh, 1871, was she born? Died in 1959, 80s. Oh, yeah. Um, you'll be interested to hear about last Sunday. In church by 6.30 for celebration and sermon, for congregation, then to a daughter church for the same at 9 o'clock, then into the city for a junior Red Cross service at the Anzac Memorial at 10.30. This preventing me looking after three Sunday schools. 11 o'clock, baptism, churching, and sermon when my colleague celebrated. 5 p.m., parochial council. 6 p.m., men's quarterly tea. 7.30, even song and sermon. Not bad for a septuagenarian, and none the worse on Monday. 
Um, and that's what he writes in the letter. That's what he writes in the and, letter. Yeah. Uh, which is extraordinary, really, that somebody mm. at 72 in a big city like Brisbane is running across the city to do mm. various bits and pieces in various different places. Um, he talks a little bit about his son, who lived there and was a bridge engineer, and his grandson, um, who at that age, at that time, was age nine. Um, and then he reports, I'm glad you went to see your uncle, aunt, and cousins. So that is the family in Ireland, in Dublin, yep. um, who also were quite globe-trotting family. Uh, and I've got some nice pictures of, um, of uh, my father's aunt and his mother sitting together in a country area in Wicklow. And he goes on to say this, you, you may wonder why I never returned to England. But one reason is I spoke against bishops going home so often and neglecting their work here. And another was I always had something to do or to finish. And it is only now that I should long to see my relations. Of course, it is too late. He didn't return to Ireland or to England following his um, emigration to Australia in 1886. His parents died, his siblings died, other things may well have happened in the family, but he was committed so deeply to his job in, uh, in Australia that he wanted to stay there throughout and show the bishops how it should be done. I think that will probably also go to the reason why the Cannon Garland Pectoral Cross actually was um, gifted back uh, as a as a as a statement of what solidarity. Yes. Yeah. I think I think my father was chosen. They obviously had maintained a correspondence mm. and maybe that correspondence indicates that it was in David Garland's mind always that it should be passed on to my father as priest to priest. Uh, and I think he, he gave it for that reason, that he, he felt that it would be best protected and, and revered and made significant by it remaining within a priestly con context. Right. Um, and that has happened, and he was right, in a sense, to do that, because it remained guarded by my father as, a, as, a, as an important um, uh, um, relic um, within the church in, 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 in England. Where we've arrived at now, and this may also have been in David Garland's mind, who can say, that its return, or my planned return for it, for it to return to Brisbane, is also important. Uh, it was protected in those years when it just might have been used for something else. But now is the right time, uh, it, I feel, to have it uh, set back in Brisbane, where he worked so well. And we'll uh, wind up uh, this particular YouTube on, on that note. and. Um, I think we will be able to really explore in detail over the, the next little while um, those topics and other topics. Yeah, I hope so, yeah. I mean, every conversation leads somewhere, doesn't it? And, yes, uh, it does. A great thing. No worries. So I'm so grateful to you, Peter, for making this record and keeping all these pieces, these strands of his life and the strands of what's important, uh, held together in one common place. Mm. And with that, um, we'll cut off.